Hey, good morning. I am Coach Raquel, and thank you so much for joining me today for Migration Matters. I'm going to be speaking today with a Jamaican youth, and he is a humanitarian and advocate um, in Jamaica. And I want to speak with him about his thoughts on migration, whether or not he has thought of migrating before. Is it something that he's attempted to do? Or, or, you know, what his travel experiences are, just to get an understanding of um, the, the mindset of young people in Jamaica, which is a developing country, and how they feel about migration. Um, but before, let me just give you a little background on the, um, what the data says for Jamaica, and I'm reading from the International Organization of Migration, of course, IOM at dot, sorry, IOM dot INT, and I'm reading one of their publications. So it says, um, the recent migration profile for Jamaica shows that emigration continues to be greatly in excess of immigration. The overall trend of decreasing numbers of permanent emigrants to the three traditional and still major destinations, United States, United Kingdom, and Canada continued, but numbers trended downwards from around 29,000 in 2006 to less than 23,000 in 2015. The dominance of the United States as a permanent destination has continued, especially of young professionals and students. Temporary guests, um, workers, programs have expanded from farm and hospitality work to include low-skilled employment in Canada since 2014. The overall numbers of persons on these programs has increased over the past decades. An estimated number of some 1.3 million Jamaican-born persons are residing abroad, amounting to, a, to at least 36.1% of the national population. Remittance receipts from Jamaica, Jamaican emigrants have trended upwards over the years to, uh, 2011 to 20, 2016. The Bank of Jamaica estimated remittances at US dollars 2.292 million in 2016, which contributed to 16.1% to Jamaica's GDP in 2015. So today we're going to be speaking with, that, those, that, that was interesting information there. Um, I'm gonna be speaking with Akilim Hamilton. And Akilim Hamilton is, um, <clears throat> he is a young advocate in Jamaica. He does a lot of charitable work. He works with Go Inspired Jamaica Foundation. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> Yes, um, sorry about that. And I just want to get um, hear his thoughts on migration and and how he feels about it, given that he works with young people as well. Um, Akilim, it's such a nice, such a pleasure, such a pleasure, to, pleasure have you. to have you. Are you with us now? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Akilim. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Migration Matters and to Yumi Radio. Um, it's such a pleasure to have you. How how is your morning? It's pretty early. It's very early. I know. How was your morning so far? Well, I'm up live and well. Yes. What's the, what's the weather like? It's sunny-ish. Yeah. Okay. It's well yet. Okay. Wonderful. Welcome to our program. Um, we'll just go right into it. Migration. Have you ever thought of migrating? from Jamaica, going somewhere else to live. Yes, Is I that have. something that has ever, it has? Yes, Did I you have, say I you have? Ha okay, you have. Um, could you give us give us a little backstory as to what made you think, what, what, what do you think inspired those thoughts in you? It was more of um, the idea, well, I was told of the idea that, um, most of a lot of first world country has more has more opportunities for gainful employment than than what done here because there's no there's very little um, employment here. I mean we're at double figures for 
youth at this moment, as well as the violence here has sparked way more than one any one person should be able to handle. I mean, in 2015 or 16, we were told to have the sixth uh, um, uh, violent um, crime rate in the world. So the, these things had led to my decision to possibly move in. Yeah, migrate. Okay. So is it so it's due to the data of unemployment amongst youth and crime in Jamaica why you have had those thoughts you're pretty much saying? Yeah, I had no, I, I'm saying I, I had the thought because I am one of youth that mm -hmm. that, that was on it, that was finding it very difficult to get employment. That was one of the oh, you were finding it difficult to, to get employment. Yeah, gainful employment, yes. Game. And oh, also, okay. I, and I was just tired of the violence around me. Oh, so yeah. unemployment and violence, crime. Yes. yes. Could you could you tell us where in where in Jamaica you reside? I reside a little off Waltham. Park. Well, I'm sorry. You don't need to give us your address. Just in the area. Are you in the inner city, the rural areas? Inner city. We're. I'm in Kingston. <laughs> ah, you're from the inner city. Okay. Um, what's? Do you have a lot of? Are you aware of the rate of migration in that in the inner from the inner city? Do you find that a lot of persons or young people from your community migrate or want to migrate? Well. Well, I, I know that lots of them want, want to migrate, but mm. I'm not sure of how much actually materialize. Right, but a lot of them want to. A lot of them want to. And where do where, where where do you believe to be the most popular places that they want to migrate to? Well, the most popular places what then is is the places that they're aware of, that that is most um, frequent in the media: the U.S., Canada. And pro and UK, those are the three most frequent places. They, they, okay. they are, that, that they are made that they are made aware of opportun that opportunities are. Mm -hmm. Um, are you still desirous of migrating, or are you now gainfully employed? I'm gainfully employed, and uh, I mean, the thought of migration has not passed my mind mm -hmm. in a very long time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So are you saying then that migration is not necessarily top of mind unless um, you find that there's a need for um, economic um, economic growth or, or you need, when you need some economic, um, you need to increase your economics. Your, your possibilities, your opportunities, that's the time when you really think about it. It's not necessarily like you're thinking you just want to go somewhere else to live just because or because you don't like Jamaica or because there seem much hap for, to be a more lavish, more extravagant. It's, it's not really that for you. It's really about am I able to make a living? Am I going to be safe? So it's really a matter of economics and security for you. Pretty much, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, Tell us a little bit about, do you, have you any experience of anyone who has migrated and is now living abroad? I, do I think have your father lives family. abroad. Go, sorry, go ahead. I do have friends and family mm -hmm. who have migrated and lived abroad for all their lives. Okay. What are some of the stories that they share with you? Um, well, the first, first off, it, they, made it, they now want to make it clear that if, um, going overseas is not necessarily what they, what, what most of the time here, most persons here would have it in their mind to believe that, okay, once you go over there, you'll get a job and so on and so forth. That's not how it works. It, you know, it's not the easiest thing, but it's something that you can, you can become accustomed to and there are jobs there. So there are jobs across. It's just that. It's just you may have to work two, three jobs, two, three jobs, rather than in Jamaica, you to work one job. Well, you work two, three jobs to remain stable because um, your cost of living, while it might seem reasonable, it to or compared to their their dollars, you, you may have to do that extra work. 
to stay just to stay afloat. Let me see if I'm understanding you correctly. So what you're saying is based on the stories you're hearing of the experiences of Jamaicans who have migrated, what you're hearing is it's not it, it's it's not a bed of roses, as some would say, um, as we may think going into it. Yes. Right. And that when you get there, the opportunities aren't so easy, easily accessible as one may think is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Do you think that has influenced your lack of desire or no? No, it, no, it didn't pay a factor. Okay. Your father's living in the UK, right? That is correct. Okay. Have you ever thought of joining him there? <laughs> um, um, I, I've Just thought of going to the UK, but not to join my father. Oh, you've thought of going there, but not to join him. Yes. Okay. Is there anything else about migration that you'd like to share based on your experience, stories you've heard from your friends of your, or your own thoughts on it that you'd like to share? Migration is a very delicate topic, per se, because it's, it's the concept that holds the... Um, globalization as well as partnership between countries. All right, so it's not something that we should jump jump immediately in our head and say, let's migrate, let's migrate, but having a sound plan because when you migrate into a, and it's, called, it's literally a land that is not of your own. You're, you'd have to learn their customs, learn every, every little thing, like stretching over, so as to be to, um, so as to be able to survive in this new world, as my friend would put it. Right. But once, yeah. but normally once once you get a grip of the environment, because mm -hmm. humans are very adaptive, we'll become adapt. We'll adapt to the situations that that are that are there, and make decisions to go, um, to to do better. The most I'll say is, but the most persons I recommend when when they go overseas they do their best to always remember that it's not their home of birth mm -hmm. it's their home of choice that's an interesting way to look at it my final question akilem um how have you seen jamaica benefit from migration through remittances or otherwise I mean, remittance is 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 the. Have you ever been? You should have. You should go to uh, Western Union during the Christmas time <laughs> or back to school period. The line is as long as the building. They'll wind up, wind up inside, fold up inside until you line up out the door. Go outside, go all the way. So, so it helped. I can see where it helped our country to remain afloat. It does because it keeps some even some of the persons in the inner city community. Their, their ability, because they don't necessarily have, well, a lot of them don't necessarily have a job and that's what they rely on to be able to send their kids to school, um, to eat and so on and so forth. So, okay. I, so it reduces, it helped to reduce the burden on government pockets um, in regards to those, those areas. It also, um, having somebody else overseas, also the opportunities that, that they may have that may be available to them because of they're in a first world or, or another country may not necessarily be readily available in Jamaica. Yet uh, such the norm, um, persons overseas normally get their family members involved in, in other things that that they may have available overseas. So it, Thank you. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so it's really good. Plus the, edu plus the education. The right. education varies in, uh, everywhere in the world as such. As such when you're when you're overseas, the type the information that you may have been placed with, as in the how the style of how you may get it, you can come back and share it with us. So we have a diverse way of understanding stuff. So it's it, it really it really helps. It really helps our country. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Akilim, for joining us today on Migration Matters. That was Akilim Hamilton, and Akilim Hamilton is uh, he's doing his Masters of Law. And he's also a humanitarian and he works with Go Inspire Jamaica Foundation. Thank you so much, listeners, for joining us and viewers on YouTube. Have a great day. Bye.